what is up guys thanks so much for hanging out on a monday night a jaguars united live show it's nothing without the fans here so shout out to the fans if you have not yet subscribed to our youtube channel that's on you and you're missing out on the notifications um if you are one of those people that have subscribed but you haven't yet followed our twitter you're halfway there so make sure to follow our twitter jaguars underscore united it's monday night we got some super bowl matchups coming uh Man, remember back in the day, you used to get excited about the Pro Bowl this time of year. You were like, oh, man, the Pro Bowl is coming up. Like, it's going to be really fun, but it's not so much anymore. Um, Kev B says, hell yeah, Jason. Hey, that's what it is. First comment, shout out for sure. We got some Duvals in the chat from Jordy, Zach Becker. Uh, making sure I was uh, unmuted there. I'm glad I was. Uh, Chili Willie says, Noti Gang. If you're not getting notifications, get out of here. Charlie Boy Duval, that's right. Did the countdown start over? Asked Cast Shoots. Yes. It did, but I do have a new countdown coming, I think, for next episode. So, shout out to that. Charlie Boy says, can you upload the last live stream? I didn't get a chance to listen to the whole thing. We cannot do that one. If you were missed it, uh, Mike and me came on and we did a uh, rather spicy live show. And um, after reviewing the tape, we decided it's best that we leave that one to live view only. So, if you watched the live show, you got a little treat. If you didn't, again, it's all about the notifications. You want to make sure you get notifications so you can watch our live shows. Uh, sorry for that. Christian Charles says, yo, and Nutty Gang. Uh, TJ Maxx plays as you know I'm here. Well, today, I didn't even get a chance to um, edit this here, but let's let's edit it here. We're going to say, um, we're going to call it a Joe Colon breakdown. How about that? And I'll do it as we're live when you're a pro. Um you can do things like that, and you can literally edit live while you're talking. That's what pros do right there. So, if you don't believe me, don't think we're going to do a Joe Cullen breakdown, all right, well, that's on you. Um, we are definitely 100% doing that. So, pulling this over here, I wanted to kind of look at what Joe Cullen, I mean, like, look, we had some things to say about his personal life last time. Um, not going to hold that against him. Um, you know what I'm saying? Let's take a look at what Joe Cullen does on defense, because I'm a huge fan of watching the film, and if you've never watched this channel before, then you don't know, but we uh, love watching game film around here. So this is the uh, condensed film. So if I'm having trouble rewinding it, it's because it's condensed and like it's broken down into like two seconds. So let's take a look at what Baltimore does here. And look, this it's only fair to ask the question, how do we know for sure that Joe Cullen is going to run what he ran in Baltimore. Uh, we don't. We have no clue if it's what he's going to do. Um, but it's all we have to go off of, and I think that it's going to be good. Um, and I think we can tell from – like, like, would you go to your next job working for Urban Meyer? I know Colin's got a lot of experience, and but I think that he's more of a 3-4 guy. I think we can see that here. Um, I like it. I like what I'm seeing in the film so far. Nick F. says, first time catching a stream live in a while. Excited. Yeah, Nick F., you should be, especially if you watched last week's. It was golden. Uh, golden. Kevin B. says, Rappaport said Stafford leaving because Bevel wasn't retained. Detroit fans thought Bevel was good. I mean, I think most people who followed football think Bevel is good. And we will break down some Bevel film for sure, 100%. But I would need some time with Colin. I needed some time with my guy um, to kind of see where we're at with that. Can you guys put a tweet out when you go live? Nick F., yeah, we, we, I could, for sure. The problem is I never know. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. This was in, obviously, the divisional round between uh, the Bills and the Ravens. And the first thing you have to look at is, like, kind of the situation and what's going on, okay? Um, it's second and ten here. They're starting the ball on their own side of the field. It looks like they're about the 38-yard line. And Buffalo's going to come out and, like, it's spread. Okay, so this is good to see. Like, it's good to see what Cullen does um, because I like to see how defenses play the spread. The spread's very common. You guys all know that. I mean, they're going sideline to sideline. I talk about all the time, spread the field. Look at this. They got to do it on this sideline. They got to do it on this sideline. This is going to put Baltimore in a basically tell you what they're playing type of defense, which is great for us. So you're going to see there have a guy over the center. That's your nose. Those are your three down linemen. You have your two outside linebackers here. Looks like they're in sort of a nickel. I can't really tell. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't know the intricacies of their roster. So I'm just going to do the best I can here. Looks like they're in some sort of nickel with five defensive backs because this guy looks like a defensive back here. Um, so they're going to basically line up in what looks like a man right off the rip. Um, 
looks like he's playing inside leverage. He's playing inside leverage. Both these guys are manned up here. Um, basically straight man defense. Uh, it's what we call cat defense. Herm Edwards, I think, copyrighted that. Okay, so not bad. I mean, they're going to get through the line here, and they're going to get pressure. So let's take a look here. So they got three. They're bringing one, two, three, four guys. Okay, so this is your standard rush. Nothing looks too out of the ordinary here. Playing man, man across the board. Um, the stunt here from the D end is going to create some issues for the Buffalo offensive line. So take a look at this little stunt here that happens on the D end here. This is good. I mean, I, I like the stunts. Delayed blitz here is coming in. Clayus Campbell looks like he's trying to get held. Stefan Diggs gets open. So look, Marcus Peters has a tough task here. I mean, they're they're not they're not it's not a secret. They're running a straight man. If you can run a comeback to the boundary, you're going to be open here, and that's what Stephon Diggs is going to do. Okay, Marcus Peters, the best corner in the on their team. He's going to get outside the pocket, break, contain. Could be a hold there, but I like how they played that. I like how they came out with three down linemen, played straight man defense. Uh, at some point, you got to let your players make plays, and I think that's what they tried to do here. All right, so we're going to have the change of the quarter. Man, I apologize. My mouse clicker is not working too great right now. Let's get to some of these comments while we get this caught up here. Junior Jags Press says, I caught the live stream early. Congratulations, Junior Jags. Nick F says, staff leaving because Bevel came to Jags is making me excited about our O oh, next year. Yeah, I mean, I think again, I think Bevel is a huge uh, addition. People, like, love Bevel. I mean, he's he's, in, he's the guy that, Every casual fan wants to root for. He's had a great, illustrious coaching career. Let's take a look exactly what where he's been here. So Daryl Bevel is um, he's known for his you know he's been in the league for a while, right? He play, uh, coached the Packers, the Vikings, Seahawks, the Lions. Um, look, when you've been coaching as long as this guy has. His, I like how they have his head coaching record. He filled in as the interim. <laughs> it's one and four. We we have a losing a losing head coach as our offensive coordinator. Um, he replaced Jim Bob Cooter. So Matt Patricia took a chance on him. Um, they liked him. Look, I'm down for the Bevel film later. We'll get there. Gavin Baker says today is my 18th birthday. Sh hey, shout out to you, Gavin. You made it 18 years. This is honest story. I ran into someone at work, and. They were like, oh, there's cake. I was like, oh, awesome. I don't really like cake, but whatever. Then they're like, oh, it's my birthday. And I was like, oh, congratulations. And then people started making fun of me. Like, are you not supposed to say congratulations on your birthday? Is that is that a bad thing to do? Like, I got crap for it all day. It, it seems like something normal. Congratulations. Is that bad? What are you supposed to say? Happy birthday? Junior Jags Press, you guys heard about Brett Favre talking about the Jags on what Myers should do with the first pick. So stupid. I didn't see it, but we'll pull it up here in a minute. Uh, there are four players on the Ravens D who are free agents now. Could we go after them because of Colin? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that any, we got to add to our defense in free agency. It's not going to work through the draft. We've tried that. It takes time for them to develop. Austin will have to get the big time three technique D tackle. Someone who can rush the passer and stop the run if we want to run three, four defense. Yeah, we do want to. Now, when they brought in Al Woods, I think that's what they kind of plan on Al Woods being. Rodney Gunter, I mean, I'd seen, I'd seen him play pretty close to the ball. I didn't know if that's what they were going to do with him, but you're right. They're, if they're going to move to that 3-4, they got to have that nose, which rushing the passer is really secondary to what we need them to do. We need them to basically just, like, see, like, what – they have the linebacker lined up here over the ball just to kind of create some – this is like an over front, something like that. Again, Buffalo is coming out in this empty package. Buffalo is not trying to <laughs> play their line versus your line. Buffalo is playing our skill guys versus your skill guys. And that's what the NFL is becoming. Look, that's why the field is so spread here. They're going to get a first and 10. Ravens are showing blitz here. But again, when Buffalo comes out in this five wide empty gun, you, there's not a lot of disguising that can go on. <laughs> like You have to pretty much commit to what you're going to do. Um, because you're not going to have time to disguise. So the Ravens are going to disguise a little bit of a blitz here. Again, they're going to bring their four. Haven't yet gotten too exotic with their blitzing packages. They're going to get some pressure on Allen. And, man, I mean, what a throw from Josh Allen. 
I mean, when you look at throws like that, it reminds you why he's so good. But see, they're going to line up these guys tight here on the edge to the boundary. And these two secondary players, and I don't know if this guy's a nickelback or a linebacker, but they're basically going to have to play three on two. And they're going to run a little smash concept. This guy's going to run a corner. And the corner is pretty much uncoverable. I mean, what are you supposed to do? I mean, 22 has no shot. <laughs> he has no shot at that. And look at him. He's like, look, guys, what do you want me to do? That was a perfect throw and a perfect catch. I mean, a literally perfect catch. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's the downside of running that straight man that uh, everyone likes so much. All right. Um, you guys going to have Smash Mouth on anytime soon. Yeah, me, Smash Mouth and me got it. I'm, look, I'm just more surprised that someone like me could get Smash Mouth and interact with them on Twitter. Like, it's kind of weird thinking about it. But me and him had a little back and forth. <laughs> and I'm like, this is legit Smash Mouth the band talking. That's hilarious. Uh, Philip Butcher says, LMO, how about happy birthday? <laughs> I know, but for some reason, um, it just feels like that. I got to, I mean, I got to have, they're giving me a warning on YouTube. I'm glad they're giving me the warning. I don't want to get shut down. I guess I'm showing too much of the NFL clip there. We'll come back to it. Um, how about happy birthday? Yeah, I know. I should have said happy birthday. Looking back, that legit like should have been what I said um, for sure. Uh, Brett Favre likes getting wide receivers because he has a quarterback. That's how his brain works. Okay, yeah. I mean, for sure. And he was a risky quarterback. He was a guy that like kind of you know, didn't take a lot of chances with not <laughs> – he didn't not throw the ball down the field. Uh, maybe Al Woods plays next season. Um, I don't even know, man, what the last thing up with Al Woods is. I mean, seriously, the guy is was never really that impressive when he was on the field. I mean, I think when he was with the Seahawks, he had his best run. I think he was like kind of with that Legion of Boom for a minute. Um, was definitely the gap stuffer. Um, opts out. So if he signed, he signed a one year. $2.75 million deal, but he opted out um, due to COVID. So I don't know what that means. Like, do you get your money back? Do you get <laughs> your uh, contract like postponed? Like, I don't know how that you, you couldn't do that. So my guess is that Woods got paid and didn't play, which is sad. You know, and if he's on a one year deal, then I mean, he's kind of old. I mean, what does he know? He's uh, looking for his age here. 33. I mean, that's not too old. Randy Moss comments will not be forgotten, bro. Randy Moss, you could tell when Randy Moss was talking that he had no idea what he was saying. <laughs> you could like, you could tell mid-sentence that he was just making stuff up. Like, you don't want to live in Duval County because of crime and Black Lives Matter. It's like, wh what? <laughs> what? You're just like, look, and they're like, I've. I do it every time I come on here. I just run out of things mid-sentence to say, and I just kind of keep going and adding words in just to finish the sentence because I'm literally talking by myself. So, man, no one to, like, bounce off of. So I can imagine Randy Boss ran into a spot in his sentence where he was like, uh, I'm out of words, so I'm just going to add in words like Black Lives Matter and crime and things that Jacksonville I'm kind of associated with, sort of, because I'm sort of from the South. Like, I don't know. It makes no sense to me. Um, Austin says, but if they can't rush, then they'll just continue to double Josh Allen. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to bring in pressure from the middle of the field, whether it's like a linebacker blitz or it is some sort of uh, stunted rush. I'm looking for some videos here, but uh, I wanted to play something for y'all in the background. You know what I mean? Did I, I may have uh, accidentally moved them to the wrong one. Well... Sometimes when you play with fire, folks, you get burnt. Pulling up my pictures here. All right, get some more of your comments. I know you'll cover more draft content later, but if we can get one Rashawn Slater or Darisaw or a corner like J.C. Horn with our second first pick, I'd be very happy. Or safety like Mooring. Well, um, I get it. And look, there's... Darisol, I mean, J.C. Horn. I mean, those are good players. I'm just kind of weary on 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 investing into the defense. Like, we've tried. I mean, we did that. We literally took 
two first round picks this year were defensive players, a corner and a, and a D end. Like, I think they're going to work out, but how much more can you invest in young people? At some point you have to just kind of learn that uh, offense is what this league is. Look, you see rookie offensive players come into the league all the time and make plays. I mean, it happens over and over and over again. Uh, defensive players, it kind of can take some time and that's just the way that it is. We're in kind of, I know we have time, but we're kind of in a win now mode, to be honest, in my opinion, like urban, not, not like that there's expectations on urban to win now, but urban is going to have those expectations on himself to win now and Trevor Lawrence. So I think it ends up being a situation where it is a win now. Like if you kind of, you know, are with me a little bit here. All right. So this is what you were talking about. Christian Barmore, um, CBS mock has the Jaguars taking, Christian Barmore with that 25th pick that we got from the Rams. Um, look, he was a guy that was very disruptive in the middle of the field. And I've, and I'm always a guy that's going to um, look for a disruptive guy. I've talked about it all the time. I don't care about stats. I don't care about sacks. I don't care about tackles for losses. If I'm watching the game is the dude being disruptive. Like it's not that hard um, to do. So, uh, you know, I like that Barmore pick. Um, I don't know that he survives till then is the only thing. And I think you do end up getting – want to get a receiver. Like, look, receivers fall every year. I mean, they absolutely fall every single year. So let's look at the receivers that – or uh, in, like, skill position, offensive players that are ahead of that 25th pick. Jalen Waddell and Jamar Chase, I think – I don't know if, if Jalen Waddell is a guaranteed guy there. Um, Devonta Smith guaranteed Jamar Chase guaranteed could Jalen Waddle fall to 25 I mean look when you're picking in the top 25 you need that player to contribute like immediately and Waddle may not contribute immediately so if you're a coach or a GM that is kind of needing this draft pick to hit to save your job you're not taking Jalen Waddle so then you start to think about guys who are safe who can afford to take a risk and that's where the only team that I see on here that could do that is Miami. So if Miami does do that, they have that chance, but I don't think they do. I mean, there's so much more potential there. I mean, they don't even know if they have their quarterback figured out. So Jalen Waddle is a guy I could totally see falling to 25, if not just, just outside of where the Jags could try to trade up and get him there. Kyle Pitts, I think he actually gets drafted higher than 13. Would love for the Jags to get him. I don't think there's any chance that that happens, um, in my opinion. Kadarius Tony, I don't know. That's a guy you're seeing kind of jump up the mock boards here lately because he I mean, he had a great end of the year with Florida. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, the dude's career trajectory just, like, went up, like, steady. Um, I love that pick. I just I, – I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. That was like – look, as a guy who's watched every Florida game, I still don't know how to evaluate Kadarius Tony. Like, I really don't. Um. I could see him being good, and I could see him not being good enough in the NFL to create space. Like, it seems like he was making people miss in college all the time. Screens, flares, kick returns, end arounds, things like that where he got the ball in his hands, he was making plays. But the level of competition is going to tremendously step up in the NFL, and I am a little skeptical that his game isn't going to translate. I hope it does. Um, but that's my honest – that's me being honest. All right, so look, we're, we're not even looking at that many offensive skill players. We've had three or four before the Jags are picking Barmore. This is just a very empty draft. So this is an intriguing thing here, this 29th pick of Travis Etienne. It says Tampa taking Etienne. I mean, it seems like Tampa can do it with any running back they want. I don't know why they would prioritize a guy in the first round. That being said, I would take Etienne there. Um Look, he's a guy that can play receiver and running back. He works with Trevor Lawrence in the past. Why not? I mean, he seems like he fits whatever Meyer would try to do offensively. Um, so why wouldn't you, honestly, in my opinion? Let's try to get caught up on some of these comments, and we'll get back to the mock draft. I appreciate you guys hanging out here. Um, we're just talking Jags. So look, give me y'all's opinion. I know I kind of rant and I get past it, but give me your opinion on who you think the Jags should take um, at 25. And obviously, best available player. You could answer, you could write that if you wanted to, but that's not really what I'm looking for. I mean, I think we all would agree the best available players who we would take, but tell me who you would want. And uh, we'll kind of talk about 
that person. And look, we haven't been copy striked by YouTube. Look at us, man. See, when we started, we just were getting in trouble left and right by YouTube. And then now here we are not getting in trouble. We haven't been shut down. We've gone 23 minutes without shutting down, I believe. So shout out to you guys. Uh, Jason Ortiz in the comments says, I hope this one doesn't get taken down. This one won't get taken down after the fact. We had a fun live show uh, with Mike and me. Look, I've been I've been trying to do, get Mike to do shows for a while. Um, the dude knows more about the Jags than uh, anyone ever. I mean, the dude's a rain man when it comes to sports. Um, but our shows are few and far between, and they're usually um, lubricated well with some good humor and company. So um, if you know what I mean by that. Uh, they're great shows. That's you gotta get on the notifications for sure. Uh, Trevor Augustus says Rondale Moore. All right, Rondale Moore. All right, you're gonna make the claim. Let's take a look. Um, this is what it's all about: is the fans. So let's take a look at this prospect that you're talking about. So this is an American wide receiver for Purdue. All right, Purdue. Um, we can't watch the full highlights because you guys know. I get shut down by YouTube in half of a second. But let's just take a little snip and just kind of see uh, what he's, this guy's made of here, all right? Only because um, Trevor Augustus told us that we needed to. Let me just make sure that, okay, we're good here. All right, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, maybe one more play here. Okay. So this is one of those videos where it was uh, – just like every catch he's made, which <laughs> doesn't bode well for your argument there, buddy. But uh, he looked he looked okay. I mean, a Purdue wide receiver. I don't think you're gonna be like finding too many people that are like climbing the fences to get uh, him. But maybe Nick F. I can't wait for the draft and off season. We have to go tackle and receiver at least one in the off season, then the other in the draft. I don't want Etn um, or Kadarius Tony in the first. Maybe maybe Rashad Batternock. Well, um. I like, look, I like your initial thing of tackle wide receiver. And have you noticed that, um, what's his name? Leatherwood, Alex Leatherwood. <laughs> Every player that does a mock draft for the Jags on Twitter is, um, has Leatherwood as their 25th pick here. So look, if that ends up happening, I mean, okay, that would be cool. I mean, look at this, look at this guy. Who's this guy? Chris Trapasso says the Jags are going to trade back and get Kadarius Tony at 25. No, I'm sorry. So this is another Kadarius Tony here. Darian Kendrick. Okay. Look, I mean, <laughs> you can just see from these CBS mocks. There's a lot of different ways that you could go, um, for sure. Steve Smith is a comp. Look, I, I was just kidding. I don't, I don't know much about him. He's probably pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Nick F. We already have Visca, so I don't really want Rondale Moore or Kadarius Tony. Maybe a slot guy like Rashad Bateman or Amon St. Brown. Other guys like the UNC wideouts or Tyler Wallace are pretty good. I mean, there's definitely people there. I mean, there's people available in the draft. I mean, Ryan Wilson's um, mock draft has a bunch of wide receivers going after our 25th pick. Um, Rashad Bateman here, who's who you're talking about. He says, I have no clue what the Bears plan to do at quarterback, but if Allen Robinson leaves... This 6'2 sophomore. I mean, look, anytime you're coming out as a sophomore, I mean, is that even legal? I mean, he's got to be he's got to be a junior, right? Maybe a redshirt sophomore. I don't know. But Rashad Bateman could have had a great year. It's 6'2", 210 from Minnesota. Uh, Moon Illusion says Kendrick is not that good. Yeah. Uh, well, that's – I trust you, Moon. I do. Trevor Augustus says Sig Jukes aggressive to the ball. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to those things um, – they're sexy in a college athlete, a player that can move around and can make plays. Um, it's sexy. You kind of, you want to add that to your team, but how many people are you going to have on your team that do that? Like we said, LaVisca Chenault, he's going to be a playmaker. James Robinson is a playmaker. I do think you need to add a wide receiver, but I'm kind of thinking the opposite of what y'all are thinking. I'm thinking like a prototypical um, receiver that can play on the outside and get open. Like seriously, like a Allen Robinson would be perfect. Like, absolutely perfect. Like, I know he's really good, and I know yeah, he's been here, and he's going to cost a lot of money, but I think those are all things that we can overcome. Like, I really think that Al Robinson is a perfect fit here. With the new regime, think back to any, like, 
Big 12 offense that Urban Meyer ran or Florida. I mean, he had a big-time wide receiver. I mean, whether he came from the tight end position or it came from a guy on the outside, he always had one. Look, go get Allen Robinson, pair him with DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault. On the surface, if those are your guys, then I th- with no injuries, I mean, that's a good team. You're going to get some depth in there. Moon Illusions is Galladay. I mean, I would rather have Allen Robinson. Like, I like Galladay. But here's the thing with Galladay is I think he's only shown it for one year. I mean, he's a guy that kind of came out of nowhere, has yet to show any type of consistency. I mean, is I know Galladay is good, but he's giving me, like, sort of flashbacks of, like, Allen Hearns. Like, just in the fact that, like, he's done it once. Uh, I kind of want to see what he does. I would hate to pay a guy that much money and him not turn out when you could pay a little bit more money in Allen Robinson and you know what you're getting. Um, Jason, what's up? Weird saying my name out loud. Thoughts on the championship games this past Sunday? Look, man, it's weird. I look up and I see X Jags everywhere. Like It started with Mercedes Lewis, who not only is contributing, he's up there starting and balling out. Like, making great catches, making pancake blocks. So the camera is panning back to Mercedes Lewis making plays. And you guys have had the audacity in the past to tell me that that guy does not deserve to be in the pride of the Jaguars. Like, he missed, like, three games ever in his life. He was so good. He played so many snaps for the Jags. If he would have stayed here, like he would be the Jags' greatest player of all time. Think about that. Think about that. Mercedes Lewis, if he would not have been released and he played with the Jags, he would be the greatest Jag of all time. Think about what he would have done here, man. Um, I get it. You want to turn it over, but Mercedes Lewis was killing it. Then on that same Packers offense, I have to watch Alan Lazard, who's not only contributing – but starting and having plays like catches and replays and the same thing as having Mercedes Lewis. And you're like, wait, what? Why are we letting these guys go again? Right. And then it moves on and you get to see the backup quarterback for the Bucks. You get to see Blaine Gabbard out there warming up next to Tom Brady. You get to see Leonard Fournette getting dubbed playoff Lenny. Man, the Jags fans were so quick to kick him out of here and I get it, but come on. The guy wasn't bad. Like, I don't think anyone... Thinks he was bad, but he just was not a good fit. I don't know. Banks says we're not getting Smith. Um, yeah, probably Devontae Smith. There are tons of receivers this year, super deep with all kinds of talent through the second round, says Trevor Augustus. I believe you, Trevor. And I'm going to actually break down some film of your boy from Purdue. And I'm going to give you a fair evaluation. I look, I, mean, I, I got the warning after two video clips, so I have to be careful. Junior Jags Press says Jalen Waddell at 25 if available. If not, hope Terrence Marshall Jr. slides in the second round. Okay, Terrence Marshall Jr. Let's take a look at your, at your boy here. I'm not too familiar with him. I'll have to take a look. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the LSU guy. Yep. Man, The Bachelor, man. I hate how we have to watch ads on here, but what happens when you don't do any prep and you go straight from the chat? All right, that's not going to work because we are going to get copy strike so quick. All right, so uh, we're going to take a look at your buddy. Terrence Marshall Jr., we're going to see. Um, Nick F. says, also the Jags have been solid at drafting wideouts in the second round the past. Like I know the Jags have been, but this is a different front office. They're picking all new people. All had big second year, so maybe big Visca breakout next year. First A-Rob, then Chark, next Visca. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I definitely hope that he does. Um, I mean, you always want your draft picks to pan out. It doesn't matter where you draft them. Okay, the jump ball versus Clemson. I remember that. I think we get one more play, boys. I don't want to get in trouble. Oh, look at this. Oh, what's this little release vertical here? Oh, that doesn't even have to push off. I like that. I like that. All right, one more play. Come on, YouTube. Don't do it to me. Oh, so he's just the vertical god. Okay, so he's just gonna he's just gonna run vertical and he's just gonna say throw it up to him. I like it. Hey, look, that's the type of guys that I like. You know, go get you a guy that you can just say when you're playing backyard football. When you look at your buddy, you're like, just run deep. That's what you want. Um, I love it. I look at that guy. That's a guy that could fill in. Okay. That's a guy that could fill in that position I'm talking about. That can just run good routes, uh, catch the ball, um, create separation, release off the line of scrimmage, get off the press. 
uh, do all those things, have good timing. Like it's something that doesn't get talked about a lot with wide receivers, but receivers have to have good timing, like not just quarterbacks too. And like the special ones you can kind of see have, it's like having rhythm. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I don't know. Nick F says, got to give some respect to Keenan McCardo, the wide receiver coach. Hope Urban keeps him. I like Keenan McCardell because he was a former Jag. As far as a coach, a receiver coach isn't going to really give you that much at that level. Look, a receiver coach in high school, that's a guy who's going to give you a lot. <laughs> that's a guy that's going to that's gonna dictate your wins a lot. Your receiver coach in the NFL, he basically just kind of reinforces the values that the coach wants to. And here's what you got to remember is Urban Meyer – is a receivers coach. I actually found that DVD. I got it here somewhere. Um, actually, let me see if I have it here. Hold on. All right, so y'all are lucky that I couldn't find it. I have a Urban Meyer. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Look at this. When I first started coaching, this was a DVD that was given to me by the head coach. And if you can't see it here, this is uh, Coaching Wide Receivers by Urban Meyer. And uh, it's a whole video breakdown of Urban Meyer coaching wide receivers. Um, one of the greatest <laughs> the greatest DVDs I've ever gotten in my entire life. It's legit Urban just sitting there telling receivers how to run routes, how to release, um, how to do things like that. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to watch it again, and I'm going to I'm gonna cut it up, and I'm going to show you all some clips from this. Next video, guaranteed, we'll do that. All right. Um, Brandon B says, any thoughts of the offensive of coordinator and defense coordinator? I like Colin. Um, I like Bevel. I think Urban's going to call the offense, but, I mean, I, I definitely like Bevel. I mean, he's, we talked about earlier in the stream, um, Bevel is kind of a guy that the whole NFL respects, and, like, every fan base is, like, He's a good coach, and that's a good sign, typically. Uh, typically. I meant that I want to keep McCardell because he's developing our young wide receivers well, especially Chark and Cole. Yeah, he is. You're right. I mean, he's doing a good job. He definitely is doing a good job, for sure. Micah Erickson. <laughs> Glad to see Jason wears pants during his live stream. Micah, I got to give you a shout-out. If it wasn't for you, we probably would have posted that live show. Um, you brought to my attention a glaring mistake that I could not have posted live. So thank you, Micah. Thank you. Moon Illusion says, dang, talking about the DVD. I know. Junior Jags Press says, Nick F. Hope so, too. Uh, referring to McCardell being the coach. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, when you get into a position coach, I guess, I mean, being well-respected is probably just as important. I mean, for sure. Um, it's like the Niners having Wes Welker as a wide receivers coach. He can just turn on his tape and go show the young guys how to do it because he had to win with route running. Same with McCardell. Yeah, McCardo, I mean, he also with great timing. He had great hands. I mean, people, I don't think, give him enough credit for his, like, hands. He was a very good receiver as far as physically catching the ball. Like, I know, that sounds really dumb to say out loud, um, but it's it's very true. Um, great guy. Love McCardo. Super happy. Um, we titled it Joe Cullen Breakdown just because I wanted to show you all that I could change it while we were live. And we didn't do much Joe Cullen. We got shut down pretty quick. So I do want to give some, like, kind of final thoughts on – his philosophy and um if you can remember back to 2017 with um todd wash he let his uh defenders play basically what i i like to call basketball defense man on man uh cat on cat like i'm covering you no matter where you go and if you have athletes you can do that and it works the way the nfl set up with the rules and the um advantageous pre-snap alignments the NFL allows the offense to do as far as motioning and shifting and all these things. Um, it's very hard to cover in space. So a good offense usually can overcome a good defense. That's why you kind of depend on the, who you have out there. Look, the same guy who called that man defense was getting crucified Todd watch when he tried to do it in 2018 and 2019 and 2020, because if you don't have the talent, if you don't have the players, it just doesn't work. Like if you have Calais Campbell, Dante Fowler, Yannick Ngakwe, Malik Jackson, all those guys that were contributing on that D line, of course your back seven's going to look good. Like of course. So 
got to get pressure. I think some of you talked about Barmore. Some of you talked about being able to get guys on that defensive line. It's going to be very important. You can move Chazon out to stand up outside backer. Great. Um, you can have Allen out in the five technique or the seven technique. Great. Um, you can line up who at D tackle. I don't know. Is there anyone here that's going to stay besides Allen on that D line? Uh, I mean, I know people like Smoot. I'm not crazy about Smoot. I mean, he's good. I'm not crazy about him. So. I don't know. He's going to play a lot of man. we got to get some talent in here, or we've got to be able to outscore people, and that's what it's going to come down to. So hopefully the Jazz can pick up a playmaker, um, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Mike Erickson, you're welcome. It was hilarious. Well, look, shout out to you guys. I appreciate you all being here. Um, I think I'm going to sign off. I want to do some homework. I want to look at this DVD again. I want to check out some video, some of these prospects you all talked about. We're going to break, up, break down Bevel tomorrow and i'll do a better job of setting it up so we don't get you know copy striked thank you guys for being here you guys are awesome i love you guys make sure to follow the youtube subscribe twitter all that stuff share it with someone you know is a jags fan tell them to check it out um hopefully the shows will be as good as they were uh, a couple nights ago if you those of you that caught it make sure you get notifications so you watch you can watch the live shows i think they're gonna be uh more and more happening now that the jags are good and people are willing to do the shows all right well hey i'm signing off man you guys are the best um, shout out to you guys in the chat. You guys know what to do. Um, love you as always. Go Jags.